right guys, welcome back to Turbo Time. In today's video, we're gonna pick up right where we left off on the last video, installing all the accessories for our ON3 Twin Turbo Kit. Uh, if I missed anything, or if you have any questions, drop it in the comments. As always, if you like this content, share, like, subscribe. Let's get right into the video. All right, I don't know if this is the right way to do this, but there's very little information, so we're using one of these. And we're just trimming right along. All right, so pretty much take out the entire middle section. Goes back in there great. I originally only cut to about here, but you need to go a little further than that to be able to clear the charge pipes. But fits right on. All right, so we have our grill all trimmed up and reassembled. Where you're going to want to cut is right along the lines of the shutters. You can see that I literally left the little pegs that the shutters used to go on. Just cut clean there. You're going to take off this middle bar. And then you're going to trim back on this edge. Just right to where you still have everything that retains the grill. I took off the little stepper motor that used to go. Uh, pretty much right here to the uh, to the grill shutters. Uh, I might plug this back in and zip tie it up somewhere um, if it does cause a engine light of some sort or uh, like a fault code. But I've already test fitted it on there. It, it fits good just as as it is. So this is really all you need to trim and it's gonna give you the access you need. Something else I'll mention is that you do have to delete the active arrow. There's a lip that goes down there along with these two motors on either side of the bumper. You need to take this stuff off to actually be able to run the intercooler piping. I should have included that in my uh, last video. All right, guys, so one of the initial concerns I had is that the spark plugs would not be able to come out with the downpipe where it was. You can absolutely get them out. You do need an eight millimeter wrench instead of a socket to be able to get the two front coils. And you gotta kind of uh, snake the stuff out of there, but it, it absolutely all comes out of there. It was a big deal to me because on a turbo car, you gotta check plugs and swap plugs more often than you would on an NA setup or, you know, other than stuff that's gonna be a turbo E85 stuff. So I'm very happy with that portion of it. And I can say that you can absolutely swap the spark plugs on the ON3 kit without having to disassemble anything.
All right, guys, so spark plugs are in, injectors are in, map sensor is in. Uh, for the map sensor, it sits right above the manifold. Some guys take off the whole manifold. You just gotta be willing to crawl up there and get that one eight millimeter bolt off, take off a little harness, swap that out. Um, as I said earlier, the spark plugs absolutely are doable with the downpipes and everything already on. And I'll be completely honest with you, the injectors were a breeze. I'm gonna post a link in the description to my friend, Big Mike, who was the um, provider of these FIC 1000s, completely plug and play. I'm gonna show you guys in a minute the model number and everything, because they were uh, difficult to track down when I was looking for them on all of the major websites like Beefcake and uh, Lethal and everybody else, they show it, but for Whipple trucks only. So I'll go ahead and put that in the description. Right now, I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the battery tender and we're gonna go ahead and flash our base map for the injectors and give it the first startup. So sit right there. All right, so while this is flashing, um, I actually ended up going with HP tuners. I was gonna use the Avid device. I still have it. I might still use it in the future, um, but I'll get into that later. These are the FIC 1000s. This is the part number that you want. Um, nobody really lists this part number and it's confusing because it's listed as 04 to 16, but um, they work perfect on our setup. Um, these are the spark plugs you want to run. They're two steps colder than the, um, they're two steps colder than the factory plugs. Rob Shoemaker recommended we go ahead and gap these to 24, so we did. You absolutely need to swap the map sensor. The map sensor is a must. CX2657. This is your pretty much EcoBoost, any EcoBoost. Um, I ordered one for my wife's Explorer ST. They kept asking me for a VIN number, same, same part number to swap out your factory one. I went ahead and got the flexible dipstick. Uh, several people offer the dipstick and they want uh, substantially more money for it. Uh, about 140 bucks. This was 80 bucks on Summit, and I actually believe it's the exact same part. I'll go ahead and put the part number here and also uh, link it in the description. It sounds like our tune may be just about complete, so I'm going to check on that. All right, we got to turn off the ignition. All right, let's see if it'll start. coming so I'm gonna cut you guys off here be right back all right so the way we connect our wastegates and this will be for any wastegate whether you're running the on threes or you upgraded to the turbo smarts or precisions or any brand of your choosing um, on your bottom port is your diaphragm side this is what opens the wastegate so when you get to the spring pressure in here this opens the wastegate uh, c7 psi lifts it that's what we have in there so i ran this to uh, the center, which is where our vacuum block is going to go. 
So we're gonna put this vacuum block, this is gonna get a hose directly from the manifold, and then this is gonna distribute that same pressure to all of our items. So this one and the bottom on the other side. All right, bottom on the other side. They run together and turn into these two little lines right here that are gonna go plugged in to that vacuum block. Now, our top hose, which is the dome pressure hose, all right, what this hose does is bleed air out of the boost controller and uh, add air to the top of it to strengthen that spring. So if you have seven PSI here and we add seven PSI up here, you can control between seven and 14 PSI. So we can turn it up between seven and 14 using this method. So what I did here was I made both of these relative equal length. So from the top there to the top here, we bring them both together and put them to a T. Now we're gonna feed that T from our number two on the max solenoid. Number three here in the front is a vent and number one is what's gonna get a clean boost reference. So we're gonna take our fitting, put it here. We're gonna run one directly to here and then that is gonna feed our T, which is feeding both domes to be able to control boost as we raise the duty cycle, it'll let us raise the boost. guys we're building our catch can setup I'm going to show you guys what that looks like um, motion race work sent over all of this real nice stuff all uh, for goal the hardware and everything really nice uh, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this on and show you guys uh, where that ends up This is how I ran the catch can setup. I was able to bolt it right here. Uh, use the motion fittings for the valve covers. They provide the 10 AN line. All Fergola stuff, really nice. And this is how I ran that. Just gotta finish up our vacuum block setup. We're gonna go ahead also with the motion fitting we're gonna go 6 a.n. from there to there. And uh, we ran all of our reference lines with the push locks, tried to make everything neat, have some more of that heat uh, insulation. You see on that one, we're gonna wrap all of it in heat insulation. And we're pretty much ready to go. Just got to bring out the reference line for the E2 boost controller from inside, install that inside, and we're pretty much ready to go for the first ride. All right, guys, so where I'm putting my boost controller is going to be where the air vent goes. I know this looks like a lot of stuff is taken apart, but this pops out. You only have to do this one bolt from here, and then there's two seven millimeters there. You pull back on that, and this whole thing just comes out. And you have this. I bought something that replaces this centerpiece with where to put the gauge. I made a little access hole to uh, get the wiring down. Now I'm gonna find a 12 volt power source. 
I already ran the vacuum source out toward the vacuum block out in the engine bay and besides the fuel pump we're a hundred percent ready to go I just need to button that up you can see there's a grommet down here that gives you good access and um, that's pretty much it we're gonna get this thing buttoned up all right so boost controller is in all the eBoost 2 requires is power ground and then the two signal wires that are coming from the max solenoid I believe it's brown and gray it doesn't matter the polarity coming from the max solenoid the black goes to ground I found a ground right behind this uh, right to a factory ground and then we ran a single wire to a tap on the passenger side right over here so I went ahead and uh, made a connection there and we're going to go ahead and put it I believe to fuse number two I'll update you guys on that this will power up our e-boost controller and uh, we'll be ready to set that up all right guys so this is what it looks like all finished up the only thing left to do is put on the heat shield over the ecu uh, i didn't like it in the silver it came so i painted it in some high temp black uh, we're gonna go get a log for uh, rob shoemaker real quick nothing exciting just regular driving under 3000 rpm to get us a good uh, baseline uh, set up going he does drivability first then performance in the next video uh, I will be doing the fuel pump install and uh, we'll have a bunch of logs and stuff we might have a track day I'll keep you guys posted but for now let's take it for a spin Feels pretty much just like a stock truck. Uh, I have the full stock exhaust, so it's actually nice and quiet. I do have the uh, electric dumps on the way, so we will be able to open those cutouts and essentially make it open downpipe. But under normal driving conditions, feels just like a factory truck under 3000 RPM, maybe slightly peppier but very satisfied with this kit, guys. I'd highly recommend it to anybody that's looking to boost the truck on a budget so far. If that opinion changes, you guys will be the first to know. Looking forward to seeing some dyno numbers as well as some track numbers. Uh, hopefully in the coming weeks, I can bring you guys all that. As always, guys, if you enjoy the content, share, like, subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.